Hello everyone and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade. I'd like to welcome you guys to um, episode 118. Today is um, Sunday, January 17th, 2016, and I'm glad you could join me today. Um, looks like the light's pretty good today, so that's good. Um, not sure I have like a ton of knitting progress to show, because um, I ended up spending a good chunk of yesterday um, digging a trench in the rain. Don't recommend that. <laughs> but I'll show you guys what I've got. So, um, I guess I can start with the sweater. So I am working on Mold Cider by Fia Coleman. And this is how far I am. Um, and for reference, this is how far I'm probably going to have to be. So, we'll just do a little comparison. Yeah, so I'm probably like one third of the way done with the, this particular guy there. But maybe that's even generous. But um, this is the boring front. Um, and it is continuing on. So it's probably like 12 inches now out of however many it needed to be. <laughs> um, so it has got a lot of love, but has gotten some love. Um, it is definitely the most mindless of my knitting right now, so that is nice. Um, and, it, like, even though it is a sweater, it's in pieces, so it's still extremely portable and fits in my knitting bag. I've recently finished a ball of yarn and incorporated another one, and I suppose we could be all quantitative about the number of balls used. If that, I don't know, it's sort of hard to, to gauge project progress on things like these just because it is a pretty big project. Um, this is actually the first time I've actually incorporated another ball in, so in that regard it's actually, um, what is it, it's actually pretty good. Um, what is it in terms of like yarn usage and that sort of thing. So it took several, it seemed like it took several balls in order to make the back, so the fact that this one took so long to need more yarn is interesting to me. And I could be totally wrong as well. But I did end up reaching the end last night, so I have a nice big full ball and then like a half ball, I think. Because um, the yardage in each ball is rather variable, and I didn't necessarily write down on the skein how much yardage it has had before I put it away, or weight, or whatever else. So, I'll end up finishing this row, and then I can count some balls. Um, so, it hasn't been getting a ton of, ton of love, because it hasn't been very exciting knitting, so I need to be doing something appropriately boring while working on it, and the boring has been lacking lately. Um, and, whatever, and it'll be the case where it'll mark the halfway point for the sweater once I finish, um, this front, so that's also nice to know as well. And I guess that'll be able to tell me whether or not I'm in the correct ballpark or not for yarn usage. Because I don't think I actually figured out how many balls it took to make the back piece, so we'll find out together. Won't that be exciting? Um, let's see. So this is out of my um, chocolate Shetland fleece, which I started spinning back in 2013 at the beginning of the podcast, and now it's finally becoming a sweater. All right, so one or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, 
nine, and that's it. Okay, so there are nine full balls. There is a tenth one in my bag. The eleventh is attached to the sweater at the moment, and then I have about a half more. So definitely have more than half the yarn left to go. So that's good. <laughs> Um, so good to have that all accounted for and whatnot, and everything's wound and everything's ready to go, and whenever I need to add another ball, then I sort of rummage through them and find whichever one looks the lightest and whichever one looks the darkest. And I'm saving the softest one for, um, the collar, um, when that time comes, so. But that'll be um, towards the very end of the sweater. So looks like everything's coming along. So um, it's definitely at this point the skeins are not showing a lot as much variation. You can sort of see a little bit of stripiness there, but it tends to be pretty consistent. So that is good. Um, and we'll see how things go from there. So this is that ball, and then somewhere in here is another dark one for when this guy runs out, which uh, it might not be too much longer before that guy runs out. Um, and I haven't been keeping the big piece with me as I wander around, um, though I think once I get closer to where I need to um, do the cast off for the sleeve and that sort of thing that I'll probably want it closer at hand. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, so this certainly is looking pretty nice at this point, so that's good. Um, the other thing that got a little bit of love, but not a lot of love, was the Aeolian. Um, this is an Elizabeth Freeman pattern. Um, and I am in um, the border charts now, which are a little bit more complicated to follow. Um, well, just because like it's um, four charts on the same piece of paper, so it's just a little bit annoying to flip back and forth between them, but um, we are in, well, there's a lot, still a lot of rows left to go, so it's not like I'm really in the end game so much as it's coming along, but um, it seems like it's um, a pretty good size, and we'll go from there. Um, so I think I did like one or two rows at knitting um, and I have um, another row with beads and then I have a long break of rows without beads so that might make it go a bit faster but here's what I mean about the chart so there's this side of the chart and I'm actually doing the setup which is this great jig, giant block on the bottom, and then I have this side of the chart, which is the centers and edge and all that other fun stuff. So it's a little um, a bit more complicated than usual in terms of knitting. The last thing that I'm working on is um, the Everdeen socks out of the dragonfly yarn. And I actually need to go back and rip back a little bit, which is sort of unfortunate. Um, I ended up losing track of where I was in the pattern. And so I needed to be cabling, and I wasn't cabling, and that was a little bit of a mess. Um, but I did get into the chart a little bit, so now there are increases and decreases um, in there but it's maybe a little bit subtle at the moment. And I was contemplating picking it back up for a little bit, but um, so this has probably gotten the most love this week, um, but 
it will need to have a little bit of unknitting occur before it will resume having full love or something like that. So the pattern starting starting to come together. It's um, yarn overs and knit two togethers and sort of increasing the drama. Um, and we'll see how everything goes from there. Um, and my problem was that uh, I ended up increasing the number of rest rows on the cable and this was um, fine until I forgot that um, my rest rows weren't necessarily rest rows anymore. So Everdeen is a Yolanda Reynolds pattern and I'm knitting that on my dragonfly fibers um, in the deep colorway, which is really pretty. Um, and I guess I'll be finding out pretty soon whether or not the yarn is too crazy for the pattern. I'm not sure. I know the pattern will look great and hold myself in a solid. So that's like, if this doesn't go, then I know there is a backup plan, but it is annoying um, to have to keep undoing sock and that sort of thing. So that's, I think, what's holding me back at the moment. Um, Duke. So that is all the knitting. Um, let's see. Um, the next thing is that I ended up finishing some spinning. So you got to see um, this uh, the skein on the bobbin. I ended up finishing plying this guy. So this is the white Shetland fleece that I got from the woolery as the practice for combing. And I think it ended up turning out very pretty. Um, it's about a sport weight. Um, and I am blanking. I am really blanking on what my total yardage ended up being. Um, do I have some way to check easily? No. <laughs> Um, I'm not even sure this has a spinning project page or that I ended up updating everything on it, thinking about it. So, um, so about nearly 10 ounces of wool. Um, I'm guessing it's a sport weight, um, three ply. Um, and I'm thinking of actually using it with my nest fiber. Um, so then this would, I would leave this natural and then do some sort of pattern with the nest. Um, because I haven't quite decided what it is that I was going to do with it. So so I would say, what is it? It's not the softest yarn I've ever made, but um, I think it ended up turning out really nice. Um, and it still needs to be washed. I neglected to wash it this week. <laughs> I did end up making some good progress on um, the Hello Yarn. Um, not to the point where, um, oh, what was it? Not to the point where I'm actually done, but I'm way closer to being done. So I ended up filling the cop and ended up taking it off. So this is the first cop and I actually pulled everything out. So it really is, um, a center pole ball, um, which is cool. Um, I'm not sure which which end I'm going to ply from when the time comes, so I might take it from the center and go from there. Um, so that turned out really pretty. Um, and now I am working on the um, next cut or whatever, the remaining balls. Um, so let's see, so that one's there. It's about halfway done and then I have five more to go. So it was the case where like it, it was getting a little bit annoying to wind on so I realized it was time to stop um, and take the cop off and it was the case where I think I had figured that was probably going to be the case because um, it was um, I was able to get all of the yellow onto the spindle but I was not able to get all of the purple on or I was assuming that since that was more of the the fiber that it was going to take. Um, or what was it that I wasn't going to be able to fit it all on. So, so I think it's sort of like the case where you can get maybe like two ounces on and I probably have an ounce left to go in this. I'm just 
taken a swag, so it'd be the case where, and that's pretty good considering it's like a 17 gram spindle. Um, and it's fun to get stuff done on this. So this one's a nice travel project, and I've been trying to very neatly wind the yarn on, though at this point I might just have to um, start making it be a little bit messier. But it was pretty when I started winding it at this point. Perhaps not so much anymore. Um, so this is my longest going spinning project. Um, since I finished the chocolate shut one, please. Um, <laughs> something else gets to have that title. Um, and now that I've been a little bit more consistent about spinning on it, perhaps it will be done fairly soon. Um, though I did end up starting another project. Um, so I did start spinning my yarn for the Hit A Few Day, um, and this is something I put in my bin for Spin the Bin. So this is um, Alicia Goes Around, and it's 65% merino and 35% silk. And um, it didn't have a colorway name, but I, I consider it to be sort of melody colored. So it'd be the case where I sort of laid everything out and I was trying to figure out if I wanted to split down the middle or if I wanted to split like the colors apart and spin all the colors and what I wanted to do. And what I decided was um, to actually split the braid in half. So it'd be the case where I ended up putting it end to end and then ripping the place where they met and then spinning from those ripped ends. So this is, um, so what ended up, sort of the color progression will be green, teal, blue, purple, blue, teal um, for the sweater. And they matched up pretty good, so I figured that anywhere where there wasn't perfect matching would end up being, um, what is it? So that would end up being just making the gradient fade a little bit more. And like the ball is like the size of my head. So this is about four ounces here. And this is what I have spun already off of the other ball. So I'm just doing it end to end. So at this point, I'm sort of in this blue purple phase and then I'll be in purple for a while and then I'll be returning to green. Turquoise, whatever. Oh, I found my phone. <laughs> Let's see if I can quickly answer that question about how much heritage I had. By looking on Instagram. So I had 114 yards of the small one, and I had 472 yards of the bigger one. So maybe that was actually more like a DK one. But yeah, so mystery solved. Phone found. <laughs> Now, okay, my spinning wheel is just sitting over here, so hopefully we can appropriately tilt. Um, do, do, do. Oh wait, here we go. Tilting, nope, that made it worse. <laughs> All right, so like this. So this is what I have so far. Do, do, do. Um, so you can see in here, I'm starting to get more um, purpley and blue, um, but that I have lots of teal over here. So I've run all the way across and now I've been running back on my bobbin. So um, lots of singles, because um, the hope is that I do want to make the hit a few day with it. Um, so it's turning out um, nice and fine, so I'm hoping to get good yardage out of it. Sometimes um, with silk, for whatever reason, you end up getting less good yardage because I think silk is like a bit heavier for how much head like it's especially dense but we shall see I'm I'm hopeful that whenever I can get everything there and even if it turns out I don't have the yardage from the spin like it it would make a really gorgeous shawl the way I'm spinning it so so it should still be pretty no matter how things turn out because they're there's one I really want to make, um, 
and the pattern is escaping me and that would pretty much be in the same colors as the one I really liked would be in. Okie doke. Anything else I wanted to talk to you guys about? Um, so I am knitting my socks for the um, resolution cow, which is going on in the sock Mirrors group. Um, the Hit a Few Day Spin is a part of the Spin the Bin, which is hosted by Completely Twisted and Arbitrary. Um, I'm not really, the only reason I'm knitting the sweater is for myself. <laughs> and the shawl is actually going to be, um, was actually um, an auction item, so I think that ends up covering all the bases. It's almost like, I think I am realizing as I'm talking about it that I probably have too many things going on at once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silliness. Probably should fix that. And it's hard to tell at the moment which one's actually the, the closest to being done. <laughs> They're all like halfway. Well, maybe not the socks. Um, but I do need to finish the socks in at least a semi-reasonable time frame since I'm hosting the cow. But maybe getting the shawl off the needles would end up freeing up some of this time, which would be nice. Eh, we'll see. Um, don't have any plans for new knit alongs. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I should be able to record next week. Um, trying to remember off the top of my head what that is. Well, what is it? Today is the 18th, so then that would be the 25th. Um, yay, man. Um, and I suppose I look forward to talking to you guys then, so take care, guys. Bye-bye.